45% of teens say that they're online constantly. And in the Journal of Abnormal Psychology, they've reported that over the past decade there's been a 52% increase in depression and a 56% increase in suicide rates. So there's an increase in time spent on social media and there's an increase in depression. But does correlation equal causation? Over time, cheese consumption has increased, and also the amount of people getting tangled in their bedsheets and dying has also increased. Just because there's an increase in the usage of social media and there's an increase in depression doesn't mean that the increase in social media usage resulted in that increase in depression. Seeing as it's World Mental Health Awareness Week, let's talk about that. Let's dive into the mysterious and controversial world of social media, examining the benefits and the negatives, and at the very end of the video, I'll recommend my advice on how you should navigate the world of social media tomorrow. And I want to put a particular emphasis on TikTok because it has one evil feature that none of the other social media platforms has that makes it more toxic than any of the rest. And it's interesting, when I was younger, I didn't have social media. And loads of people, for some reason, want to have the conversation of, is life better with social media or without social media? But I don't care for that conversation. I want to view the world as it is instead of how I want the world to be. Social media is here, it's probably here to stay, so let's just figure out how to better navigate this new reality and deal with it in a way that actually benefits our life instead of taking away from it. Now this is episode 6 in the Mental Momentum Dopamine Detox series. If you haven't already, make sure you go back and check the other videos in this series as well. So, the Lancet Child and Adolescent Health conducted some research where they interviewed 10,000 teens from England, discussing their experiences with social media and how that's affected their mental health. The conclusion they came to was quite interesting, because they didn't actually find a direct correlation between increased social media use and mental health problems, not directly. But what they did find was that social media indirectly affected mental health, because there's going to be less time to, to sleep, and there's going to be less physical exercise as well, and that indirectly directly affects mental health. But having personally experienced social media, I've come from a very different conclusion myself. Let me explain. Humans have a natural cognitive bias or a thinking heuristic that makes us view the world relative to other things instead of in absolutes. For example, if you're trying to view the price of something, your brain's going to compare that price relative to the other options on the table instead of just viewing the value of that thing in and of itself. This is why discounts work so well and some stores have discounts on constantly because our brain, instead of just viewing the price absolutely, objectively, it compares it relatively to the price that the discount was before there was a discount. We're always comparing things relative to one another instead of viewing one thing as an absolute. And this can be seen in so many different places in life. If I ask you, are you wealthy? Your answer to that question is gonna be relative to the people around you. Instead of speaking in absolutes, answering are you wealthy compared to the average GDP per capita of the whole population, we compare ourselves with the people around us. So we can conclude from this that the inputs we receive into our brain are incredibly important because our brain is always gonna compare ourselves to those inputs that we receive. And if you're constantly inputting data from other people who are wildly successful with incredible bodies who appear to be living an incredible life. Of course, your brain is going to compare the situation you're in with them. But when we actually dive into this, there are three main ways that this happens on social media, and it gets far more interesting than it appears on the surface. First, the most obvious one is body image. For guys, we compare our bodies with people on Instagram or other social medias, people who are jacked, people who spend all the days in the gym, people whose job is literally to have a great body. And for women, you guys compare yourselves to Instagram models, people who, again, spend hours and hours and hours finding the perfect lighting, people who may have eating disorders, people who, again, may use plastic surgery to get to the position that they're in. And this is not an accurate representation of reality. Chances are, if you met those people in real life, they'd look normal. Their bodies that have been tweaked and used Facetune and Photoshop to get the absolute perfect picture for their social media. So now these amazing, flawless selfies have become the norm. If you saw them in life, they don't look anything like that in reality. And even if they do, you've got to remember that's their job to look like that. And also there's a chance that they're on steroids, something that you couldn't be doing yourself. It is so bad to compare our situation with the situation that they're in. But most people know this intuitively. They know this logically. They know this. They've heard this before. They recognize that some people have plastic surgery, but knowing it logically isn't enough. You may be saying to yourself that, oh, I know that, so it's not going to affect me. But this isn't true. 
our brain is emotional, not logical. And regardless of whether you know the truth, if you input that data into your mind, your brain is still going to compare your situation to their situation. It's simply how our brain works and knowing it logically doesn't change anything. Point number two, looking like people are living the perfect life. But what you've got to understand is those people are literally only showing you 0.0001% of their life. And funnily enough, the only parts that they're showing you are literally the highlight reel of their life. Again, this is not an accurate view of reality. This is why it's so shocking for people when they see their favorite YouTubers break up. They think that they've got the perfect relationship, but in reality, behind the scenes, they really don't. We compare our real lives with their fake lives, but you can't blame these social media influencers. We all want to appear our bests. So we're all guilty of the problem. Just like when you're in traffic, you can't get angry at the traffic because you're part of the problem. We can't get angry at these social media influences because we all do the same thing. But the thing that we've got to remind ourselves of is are these people actually happy? When I watch a video like this, I get FOMO. It looks crazy. It looks so much fun. It looks like this guy's living his best life. But what I've got to remind myself of is that the things that he's doing in this video aren't things that generally tend to generate fulfillment. They're things that give you a short term buzz, a lot of adrenaline. They look crazy fun in the moment. But in the long run, when the thing's finished, it doesn't leave you with a sense of satisfaction and fulfillment. So although we're getting fear of missing out, in reality are these people that appear to have the perfect lives doing all of these fun, crazy things, are they actually happy? I believe that what generates fulfillment is growth and impact. And those videos of people doing crazy things aren't doing either of those things. So remind ourselves of are those people actually happy even if what they're doing appears to be the perfect life. And point number three, we compare the amount of likes and engagement we get compared to the likes or engagement of other people. And we do this because we associate likes with popularity, likes with the amount of people that adore them. And of course we do this as humans or we love and we crave social approval. But just because you get likes doesn't mean that amount of people actually like you. Doesn't mean that you have deep and meaningful relationships with people that actually matter to you, which is a far better metric of, uh, you know, social approval. And so many people make up excuses. They say, I don't care about the likes. But if you've ever deleted a post because it hasn't got as many likes as you wanted to, or you've ever waited for the perfect time to post your post, then you care about likes and you need to stop lying to yourself. So now we've got these three problems, which are fairly big problems in and of itself. But now these problems are put on steroids, thanks to the infinite leverage that the internet provides. So in the olden days, if you sold shoes, you would only be able to sell your shoes to a couple hundred people, maybe your neighbors and the people in the close village. But nowadays, thanks to the internet, if you sell shoes, you literally can sell shoes to billions of people, half of the planet that have access to internet. The internet has generated infinite leverage. And what that means is in the olden days, you would be comparing yourselves to the people in your close social circle. There may be someone who was slightly more successful than you, but because you all lived in a similar area and you were all friends, there wasn't too much discrepancy between the situation you're in now and the situation of the people around you. But thanks to social media, you can literally compare the situation that you're in now to the most successful person on the planet to the person in the planet that has the best shape, to the richest person on the planet, to the person that's living the craziest life. Because of the internet, we can compare our situation to the most extreme people, the people that are on the 0.0001% side of successful. And not only that, those 0.0001% of people are only sharing 0.0001% of their life. And it's an absolute mess. And these problems only get worse because of shock factor. Because there's now so many people on social media, one of the best ways to stand out from the crowd and grow an audience quickly is from shock value, to do things that elicit an emotional response, regardless of whether that emotional response is positive or negative. It's why we see so much racism on TikTok, because it provides shock value. There's people literally getting kicked out of their schools, people losing their opportunities for jobs because of racism on TikTok. It's absolutely insane. And because of the constant need for shocking things, it's distorting our view on reality. How can we view the world in a normal, healthy way when we're getting bombarded with these crazy, shocking things? And whilst we're on the topic of TikTok, one of the features that sets it apart from the rest is the fact that you don't really decide the kind of content that you want to consume. 
On Instagram, you can follow people and most of the time you spend on your follower feed, seeing the images of people who you follow and what they're posting. But on TikTok, most people spend time on their For You page and that content is decided by TikTok. So you don't even get to control what kind of content you consume. TikTok is literally providing you with the most shocking content because that's the one that performs the best overall. So you're getting bombarded with shocking material and you can't even turn that feature off. You can't even control it. And if you guys have watched my channel for a long time, you know how important friction is. Humans generally take the path of least resistance. We love to do things that are easy and it's so easy to scroll on social media. But as well as that, it's now easier, more easy than ever to cyberbully and to bully people. Literally, social media has removed the friction, removed the barriers to entry for bullying someone. We have never experienced hate on that kind of a level ever before on the planet, ever. And if there's so many people, if there are literally millions of people telling you that the world would be a better place if you weren't on the planet, as humans, we're social beings. So how easy is it to start to believe them? I think we're going to start to see some horrifying things when it comes to cancelling. We're going to start to see some, some horrific things when an absolute storm of people, millions of people, start telling you again and again and again that your life is worthless and the world would be a better place without you. It's difficult to not believe those people. And if you've watched this far and you're not an internet celebrity and these things kind of don't apply to you and you're still not convinced about the arguments I'm bringing about how social media can easily affect mental health, ignoring all of that, what about the time wasted? So literally these social media platforms are pouring in billions of dollars doing everything they can to make their platforms more addictive. So far, the main ROI that we're seeing is negative mental health. So you're wasting time and the only benefit you get is negative mental health. So you're wasting time, the inputs are negative and the outputs are also negative. And also, thanks to the timeline and infinite scrolling, our brain has access to literally endless novelty. And if you've watched the previous videos in the Dopamine Detox series, you'll know that novelty produces an insane amount of dopamine, which gets us hooked. But also, if your brain's able to get something new and something stimulating literally by swiping your thumb once, then what's gonna happen is your brain is gonna get so used to getting something new every couple seconds that when you sit down and you try and do meaningful deep work, you try and do deliberate practice, it's gonna be almost impossible. Your brain's gonna have such a short attention span. And if you can't focus for prolonged periods of time, do you find yourself jittering between different tasks again and again and again? This may be the culprit. And to be fair, I can sit here and I can criticize social media again and again and again. I can provide reasons again and again and again as to the negative consequences of social media, but I've got to give a fair argument. Obviously, there are benefits of social media. First of all, from YouTube, I have learned an insane amount. If we're counting YouTube as a social media, the amount I've learned from YouTube has been absolutely incredible. Second of all, it allows us to connect with people that you wouldn't normally be able to connect with. So how do we navigate this balance? Well, I think for now, and as you guys know here on this channel, we're time theorists. We take action, we don't just hypothesize. So I think from now moving forwards, the best change to make is just to pick one social media platform where you get the lowest ROI. And maybe that means the inputs, the amount of time and energy it takes is very high and the outputs are especially low so maybe it's causing negative health consequences pick the social media platform that has the lowest roi just get rid of it you don't need to be on all social media platforms you can't use any of the excuses of i need to stay in contact with my friends i need to say what they're doing just pick one and comment down below saying i will stop using this thing Another way that you can positively enhance your social media experience is by dictating what you see and what you don't see. Unfollow the people on Instagram that aren't providing you with value, may be making you feel bad about yourself. And also provide algorithms with evidence needed to show you more positive content. For example, if you scroll down right now, you like this video and you subscribe and you comment as well, you're showing the algorithm so much evidence that you wanna see more positive videos. So just by doing that, you're gonna fill up your YouTube homepage with positive videos instead of negative videos.